We have a question for you. What happens when the medication stops working? What happens when your doctor runs out of pills to give you? Does that mean it's over? No, it's not over. Improving your kidney function is always possible. I have seen it with my own eyes. I have seen it with so many of my patients even after their nephrologists gave up on them. And today, I am going to show you how I help my patients improve, not with meds, just science. There are 7 foods with huge kidney healing benefits I want to share with you today. And listen to me, each of these foods is special because each one of these turned things around completely for one of my patients. Fact: A small change in your diet can have a massive impact on your kidney function. It's true. but. There is a catch. It only happens if that is a targeted change. Throwing random superfoods at your kidneys won't save them, but understanding exactly which foods act like medicine, that can be the difference between dialysis and getting your GFR back to normal. Yes, I've seen it happen, and I know some of you are skeptical. You think it's just food, Catherine. So I will prove it to you immediately. You have to try this papaya, it's absolutely delicious. Our kidney saving food number 7 is the papaya. This food doesn't just taste amazing and provide a ton of kidney protecting antioxidants including lycopene, vitamin A, vitamin C and vitamin E. Papaya also contains papain, an enzyme that helps digestion. But there is more to it than just, you know, providing antioxidants and digestive enzymes. You see, I just prescribed, yeah, prescribed this food to one of my patients to save him from high potassium levels. Okay, and now you may ask, but Catherine, my doctor told me to avoid exotic fruits. How come you are recommending them? Well, let me explain. The truth is, avoiding fruit doesn't really help with the cause of high potassium. It only targets the symptom. And that's why it doesn't work. I mean, everyone with high potassium is avoiding fruit and vegetables, but they still have high potassium. Don't they? Fixing the root of the problem, on the other hand, can actually save you. But how does the papaya do that, you ask? Eating papaya made a huge difference for my patient because it helped with what was actually causing high potassium levels. This patient I am seeing was having high potassium levels despite following a low potassium diet. So I investigated and I found out that the cause was the foods he was not eating. His diet was so low in fiber, he became constipated. Yeah. The standard advice actually made things worse. And no, I'm not the Sherlock Holmes of the digestive tract. This problem is so common, it's even documented in medical literature, as you can see. Anyone should be able to diagnose this. So I improved my patient's diet. I added foods that help digestion and help bowel movements, like the papaya. And not only his potassium went back to normal, he started improving. And yeah, that's why I help my kidney patients improve their kidney function with science, not with medications. Okay, let's move on. The next food that can make a huge difference for a lot of CD patients is our number six. Number six is cassava starch. Please take a look at the very simple recipe you see on screen right now. Take a screenshot if you want, because here's the thing. This recipe is a real kidney saver. Fact, if your goal is avoiding ending up in dialysis, completely cutting protein from your diet should be your first priority. Guys, there is no stopping kidney disease without cutting protein from the diet. But getting a CKD patient to do that is not as easy as forbidding steak, alright? Because most foods that are usually considered just carb sources are actually also protein sources. And wheat flour is the perfect example of that. If you eat some pasta or some bread or other staple foods made from wheat flour, you think you are only eating carbs, right? Wrong. Think again. For each small serving of pasta or bread you are eating, you are getting up to 4 grams of protein, alright? And that's a problem. So here's the thing. Most CKD patients will be eating about 30 grams of protein per day. It's impossible to get enough calories if you eat bread and pasta and not overshoot your protein target. This is why you can find on the market a protect pasta and bread. These food items are made exactly to solve this problem. And they work. You eat a protect pasta every day instead of regular pasta and your chances of ending up in dialysis will hugely decrease, says science. There is only one small problem here. A protect food staples will cost you an arm and a leg. Enter cassava starch. Cassava starch is cheap as dirt and it has the same benefit of a protect pasta. It doesn't contain protein. So time to try this very easy recipe you see on screen right now and save your kidneys. No medications needed. 
And guys, I have more foods to show you. Each and every one of the foods I will show you today can make a huge difference for the right patient. But you will need to understand if you are the right patient for these foods. And if you want to go one step further and take all of the guesswork out of the equation, well, I have good news for you. I'm accepting new patients for consultations again, but I only have a handful of spots available and those spots always fill up fast when I mention these in my videos. So if you are interested in a customized strategy tailored to your labs, your sim and your stage of CKD, this is your chance. Drop me an email at katherine at newhope for kidneypatients.com or click the link in the description. You are not alone in this. I can help you go from watching your kidney function decline to actually taking control of your own health. Okay, let's move on. Number five, another patient, another kidney saving food. Let's talk about a most unexpected entry, eggshell. Not the egg, just the shell. But how can eggshell help the kidneys, you ask? Well, the reason for that is one of the most dangerous kidney toxins, phosphorus. So I had a patient a while ago who was having low serum calcium and high serum phosphorus. This is yet another very common complication of CKD, which can develop into mineral and bone disorder if left untreated. But since my patient was really used to, you know, having working bones, I decided that I needed to do something about it. And there's a simple treatment for this issue, a supplement of calcium. Just take some calcium carbonate with meals, I told him. But no, that was not going to be possible. Why? Because his nephrologist was completely forbidding this patient from taking any supplement at all, not even those recommended by another healthcare professional. And you know what? Doctor on doctor violence has become a thing lately, and the last thing I wanted was being punched by a nephrologist. But I still needed to do something for my patient. And guys, the way this patient was able to, you know, obey this doctor's order and still get enough calcium will shock you. Eggs saved him. Many people discard the yolks and eat the whites when they eat eggs. Some discard the whites and eat the yolks. What this patient did, however, was discarding both the yolks and the whites and eating the shells. Calcium is incredibly hard to get in a renal diet, but the egg shell is mostly calcium. And by eating that, my patient was able to improve in a body got punched in the face. So yeah, this patient, he was so terrified of his nephrologist, he was walking on eggshells. But it was when he actually started eating the eggshells instead that he improved. By the way, guys, has your doctor ever forbidden you from taking a supplement that you considered necessary? Are you walking on eggshells every time you talk with your doctor? What is your experience? Let me know. Let's talk about it in the comment section. And also let me know what you think of our number four for today because this is going to be a controversial one. Let's talk about artificial sweeteners because here is a fact about kidney health not a lot of people know about. If you have kidney disease and if you need to limit sugar, you can use artificial sweeteners in moderation every single day. And I know what you might be thinking, but Catherine, this or that influencer says that if you use sucralose, it will interfere with my insulin and my kidneys are gonna explode. Yeah, let's talk about that because you can find the most bizarre conspiracy theories on the internet about artificial sweeteners. So, should you follow this influencer's advice and stop consuming anything with artificial in the name? And maybe just to be safe, go live off the grid, grow a huge bird, get 38 cats and only eat what the earth can offer? Well, I wouldn't recommend that, guys. Following a renal diet is hard enough without being scared of food additives that have never done anything to be considered dangerous. Just because they are artificial, it doesn't mean they are bad for you, right? And yes, a naturopath is telling you this. Here's the thing. You can use sweeteners, just make sure you are using them in moderation, alright? You don't need to eat meals that taste like hardboard just because you have CKD. Use a sweetener if you crave something sweet. I've tested these on myself for several years. I don't eat sugar, but I do use sweeteners daily. My lab results always improved over these last four years. And if you want to be 100% sure, use stevia, alright? Not even of the great influencers can find anything bad about stevia. So here's my point. Some of you might be worried about consuming sweeteners because influencers are still trying to demonize them in 2025. Don't be. Having CKD and being worried about sweeteners is like having stage 4 lung cancer and being worried about secondhand smoke from someone who lives two blocks away. Don't waste any of your energy on this because here's the thing. For the right patient, being able to still include some sweet stuff in their diet can make the difference between being able to follow a renal diet for decades and spending the rest of their life on dialysis. 
Okay, guys, time for our number three for today. Let's go from a food that will make your life easier to one that could directly increase your kidney function by 14 points. This is the Brazil nut. Here's a quick tip for you. Eat one Brazil nut every morning. Brazil nuts are super tasty. And the reason why I'm recommending them is selenium. Selenium is a mineral that's been used to fight kidney disease in medical literature. But how can a single mineral help with kidney disease, you ask? Well, because a deficiency in this mineral, which is pretty common actually, is considered a cause for kidney damage. Stop this deficiency and your kidneys will be able to improve. This is why you want the Brazil nut every day with your breakfast. And keep in mind that Brazil nuts are very rich in selenium, so you really don't want to go crazy on them all right one a day is enough by the way in that study in which patients improved their gfr by 14 points they weren't supplementing selenium alone to get the hooping 14 points improvement in gfr this study is highlighting patients were taking two antioxidants together selenium and coq10 so that's what you want to do if your goal is improving your kidney function. Combine powerful antioxidants like selenium and coquitin. And today, you can find these two incredibly powerful nutrients in Rina Best, the best Rina multivitamin on the market. Because here is the thing, antioxidant deficiency is incredibly common in CKD patients. And it's a direct cause for kidney failure and dialysis. Science is very clear on this. If you don't have enough antioxidants, your kidneys are going to be damaged. This is why my renal multivitamin, Rina Best from Rina Biotech, contains not just selenium and coq but also many other powerful antioxidants that are often ignored. I name it Rena Best exactly for this. I genuinely believe it is the best Rena multivitamin on the market. So next time you go to renabiotech.co to get your Rena fiber, consider trying Rena Best as well, so you can avoid the risk for many nutrient deficiencies. Okay guys, time for our number two. Let's talk about one of the best foods you can find for diabetes and weight loss. Let's talk about honeydew melon. This is the first food I stock when I start a weight loss diet. And of course, it can make a huge difference for the right patient. How, you ask? Well, the honeydew melon is a pretty healthy fruit, super rich in vitamin C, vitamin B6, folate, and fiber, while being low enough in potassium to be safe for all patients. Now, those nutrients are great, don't get me wrong, but they are not what makes the honeydew melon special. You see, this melon, it's so low in calories, it's basically sweet water and vitamins. And most people don't realize how much calories they can cut by eating this fruit until I show them this picture. These two plates, they contain the exact same amount of calories. Yeah, I know, it's incredible. When they say a picture is worth a thousand words, well, they are talking about this picture because nothing on earth makes weight loss easier than filling yourself up with foods that are just water and fiber with little to no calories. Remember guys that it is not your insulin that makes you gain weight or any other strange theory you might have heard on social media. It's just calories. You cut calories, you lose weight. So yeah, if you are on a weight loss diet, use this simple trick. Start each and every meal with low calorie fruit and veggies such as the honeydew melon. You will feel full immediately and you won't really be able to eat as much calories as you normally would. My number one for today is a combination of foods that actually save one of my patients from malnutrition. It's true. This patient, she wasn't able to keep her weight on. She was losing too much weight and that can be really dangerous, really, really bad. And one of her issues was having nausea, which is common in advanced CKD. So what did I recommend for this patient that need to gain some weight? Well, first of all, about one inch of peeled fresh ginger before all of her meals. I always recommend ginger because it doesn't just improve the body's antioxidant activity while reducing inflammation and insulin resistance. It also works against uremic nausea, which is a type of nausea that's very hard to treat because it's caused by kidney disease. Yeah, fresh ginger is going to have a terrific effect on nausea. And also, I told this patient to include at least a couple of tablespoons of olive oil with each of her meals. Do you remember the picture I was just showing you? Yeah, honeydew melon is just as great for you if you need to lose weight as olive oil is amazing if you need to gain weight. And if you want more kidney saving tips, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye!